In this lecture, I'll give you a quick overview of server object model. SVM is basically a collection of .NET assemblies, which actually exposes a lot of classes and methods for us to allow the customization and administration of our SharePoint sites. SVM actually allows us to extend the functionality that we normally don't find in the front end of SharePoint. Obviously, Microsoft has given a lot of features for us out of the box. As per our organizational needs, if those features are not actually sufficient for us, and if we have to create something or if we have to create uh, some new applications in such scenarios, we need to actually develop some applications by writing some code. So SOM actually helps us to automate the tasks. Whatever applications we'd actually develop using SOM, we call them as fully trusted applications. Because these applications are supposed to be run on a SharePoint server, typically by the SharePoint administrator. So as these applications have to be run directly on the SharePoint server, we actually call them as server object model approach. One actual common question arises is when there are so many features available to us out of the box in SharePoint, why we still need to develop a few more features? Yes, let's take a scenario where, for example, we want to change the theme of a site. We can actually do that in the browser. But what if I have to change the theme of a 50 different sites? So in such scenarios, it's a tedious process. We can actually write a small application using SVM, which will eventually apply the same theme to different websites. So that's how we can actually use server object model to automate the tasks. And these applications run directly on the SharePoint server and we trust the behavior of those applications. In this lecture, we'll talk about different assemblies that actually makes part of your server object model. All these assemblies actually exist under a very special folder called as ISAPI, which you will normally see under your SharePoint root. Your SharePoint root folder path is like this. Depending upon in which drive you have installed SharePoint, it can be C drive or D or anything. Under Program Files, Common Files, Microsoft Shared, Web Server Extensions, under 15, you will see many folders. One of the folder is ISAP -E, where you will actually see all these assemblies. The most essential assembly for us in most of the applications that we develop is Microsoft.SharePoint. This assembly, we take it into references. Now let me quickly take you to this folder and show you the existence of these assemblies. You can now see I'm inside my D drive because I have installed actually SharePoint on my D drive. You have to get into the program files folder, common files, Microsoft shared and web server extensions. Under 15, you have a folder called as ISAPI. And inside the ISAPI folder, you'll actually see all your assemblies. So we are actually more interested in the file like Microsoft.SharePoint.dll. So this is the assembly which we normally take it into references when we develop applications. Our type of applications can be a console-based application or it can be an ASP.NET website or a Windows-based application or a WPF application. The procedure will remain same. The, this assembly, we need to take it into references into the application where we actually use the SOM approach. In this lecture, we'll see how to start working with server object model. For this, I'll be actually developing a console application to display the SharePoint form properties. To get this done, let's go back to Visual Studio. You can now see I'm inside Visual Studio and then I'm trying to create a new project. Firstly, I'm using C Sharp. I'm going for a console based application and please ensure your .NET framework is actually targeted for 4.5. And I'll be creating an application. Let's actually call this as display form properties. And I'll be putting my applications inside um, 
a folder like SPS 2013 training. Display form properties is my solution name. It's a simple console based application and say you're okay. We can use the same approach for the other type of applications like WPF or ASP.NET websites or Windows based applications. So the first thing that we need to do is to go into Solution Explorer. So inside Solution Explorer, just right click on References, click on Add Reference. And we need to take into references the main assembly that is required for SOM is Microsoft.SharePoint.dll. In my scenario, I can actually see this file in my recent section as I have used this couple of times in the previous lectures. But ideally, if you don't see that here, you can actually visit this folder, which I have shown you earlier. So Microsoft.SharePoint.dll file can be seen inside the ISAPI folder. If you don't see that here, you can actually click on Browse and you can go into the SharePoint root folder and you can go inside the ISAPI folder and then select the Microsoft.SharePoint.dll. So inside ISAPI folder, you can actually look for the file Microsoft.SharePoint.dll, which is this one, and I say OK. And that is how we actually take the, this, this very essential assembly into the references section. Now we are actually ready to start working with the CyberObject model. Among the SOM core classes, the most essential classes is SPFORM. For this, you need to actually take a couple of using directive statements. First of all, we have to take into the references using Microsoft.SharePoint and Microsoft.SharePoint.Administration. These two using directive statements should exist in every program. So first of all, I'm actually trying to get a handle to my SharePoint form, which is my local form, in fact. So SP form is the top level class, which is actually coming from Microsoft.SharePoint.Administration namespace. So I'm just typing CW and pressing tab key twice on the keyboard. So I'm trying to access the values of different properties of my form class. Especially, I'm interested in finding out what's my form ID or what's my form status, in fact. And also, we would like to know the form name. So that's how we're actually trying to print the three different properties of the form class. So I can say form.id and then form.status and then form.name. So once we are done with it, I'm just typing console.readKey statement so that it actually waits so we get to see the output. Simply build your solution and ensure we do not have any compilation errors. Once the build is succeeded successfully, we can simply go ahead and try to run our application. Now please be noted this application we are supposed to run on a system where SharePoint is installed because SOM programs are supposed to be running on the SharePoint server. So I'm actually trying to run this application and see whether it works successfully or not. I'm actually getting an error saying platform not supported exception was unhandled and Microsoft.SharePoint is not supported in 32-bit process. And please verify that you're running in a 64-bit executable. So what does this error tell us? Because SharePoint 2013 or 2010 are 64-bit, the type of application that we develop as developers also to be of 64-bit. To get that done, we need to go into the project properties and change the platform target to 64-bit. So this step is really very essential when we are using SOM based applications. So once I'm done with that step, let me actually read on this application. So this time it is actually going to show me my form ID. The form status means whether the form is actually online or offline. And also we get to know the form name as well. You can now see we got the output. It tells me the form ID is a GUID actually. It's a global unique identifier. 
form status is online and my form name is SharePoint underscore config. This was the name that was given at the time of the installation of SharePoint. So this is how we have developed a very first application which is actually talking to a SharePoint and we are actually able to find out the various properties related to the form class. So that's how, please remember from now on, in every application that we develop, we'll be doing two things every now and then. We have to have this file into references and also from the project properties, we'll, be, we'll have to set the platform target to 64-bit. So that's how in this lecture, I've shown you how to develop a very simple console-based application talking to SharePoint and retrieving me the values of the form properties. In this demonstration, we'll see how we can create a brand new site collection under an existing web application using c -sharp code. Again, we will be using server object model API methods to actually create a new site collection under an existing web application. To get this done, let's go back to SharePoint Central Administration and find out how many site collections as of now we have under this web application. So we're now inside the SharePoint Center Administration homepage. Let's click on Manage Web Application. And the web application which I was using in this demonstration is actually running on the port number 20,000. So our web application name is SPS 2013 Training. Let's click on Application Management and let's click on View All Site Collections and you can see under the web application 20,000 we have only the top level site collection or the root level site collection. Now as part of this demonstration we're now going to create a new site collection under this web application. To get this done let's go back to Visual Studio and try to create a new project and let's call this project as create a new site collection and I click on OK. Just like in my previous demonstration, so I go to the project properties and I specify the platform target to x64 and we have to take into references microsoft.sharepoint.dll and say OK. Also I need to these two using statements microsoft.sharepoint and uh, microsoft.sharepoint.administration So as we know that site collections are under web applications. Obviously in this demonstration I'll be using two new classes like SP site and SP web application class objects to get this done. A web application contains multiple site collections. Now what is a site collection that I wish to work with in this demonstration? Obviously we are now planning to create a brand new site collection under the URL 20,000 web application. So first of all let's actually create an SP site object and then we'll actually get the handle of the SP web application. So I'm passing in the URL http colon double slash localhost 20,000 that's my URL. Now we are trying to get the web application handle. So I can have an object as SP uh, web application of web app object and for the site we can get the web application handle. So when I say site dot web application, you actually get the the web application handle of this site collection. Now simply under this web application, we now would like to add a brand new site collection. So I can say web app dot we're adding a new site collection. When I say sites, you can see it's actually SP site collection. We're adding a brand new site collection. As you can see this syntax, the first parameter is the URL of the 
new site collection. So I'm actually going to create a new site collection called as training. And then the next parameter, we expect the site title. So there are multiple uh, overloaded functions we have. So we're trying the title here. So I say it's a training site collection. And then some description. Okay, I call this as SPS 2013 training. And then the LCID has to be 1033 for the US English. And then the web template, I'm going for the STS has zero, that's for your team site. And the owner login, so my domain name is cop slash administrator is the owner of this new site collection. And then the owner name can be administrator himself. And then the email ID, so I could call it as administrator at some my domain name. So that's how in this one line of code, we are actually able to create a brand new site collection. If we can properly investigate the various parameters that I have actually passed to the web app dot sites dot add method, we, we almost passed various parameters. The first one is actually the URL. How do you access this site collection once it gets created? What's the title of the site collection? And what's the description? 1033 is for the US English code. And this SDS has zero is for the team site, site template code. And then the, uh, the who is the owner of this new site collection? In this case, I'm actually designating myself as the owner of the site collection. COP is my domain name. So when you're practicing, just try to change that to the domain name of your choice. And then the owner name and some dummy email ID at this stage. Overall, we're almost ready to test our application. Let's actually build a solution and then test the code. So now it's actually creating a brand new site collection behind the scenes. Obviously, creating a site collection is a bit of a time consuming process. So let me stop the video and then I'll resume it once it is done. Okay, so let's close this application and let's go back to the SharePoint and Central Administration and try to refresh the site collections. So you now can see there is site slash training site collection is created. So let's actually visit this newly created site collection in a different tab. So now you can see site slash training is of a new site collection that we have just created using our C sharp code. So this training site, what we are seeing here is your description, title, and then the description. And the owner of this site collection is obviously the administrator himself. When you go to the site collections list, you can see the title, the description that you have passed, who is the administrator, what's the email ID of the uh, site collection owner, and of course it's using the same database for storing all our site collections. As we know, one web application by default has got one content database. And then in the same content database, all your site collections are actually created. Of course, it's possible that one can have a different database for each site collections for the better performance. That is how, in this demonstration, I've shown you how to create a brand new site collection under an existing web application. In this demonstration, we'll see how we can create a brand new website under an existing site collection. 
Let's go back to the website that we were using in the previous demonstrations and see how many subsites does it actually has. If you can see in the subsite uh, which we were using this 20,000 web application, I'm in the top level site collection. Currently, this site collection is not having any subsites. If you click on site contents, you can notice I do not have any subsites so far. Now my intention is to create a brand new subsite under this site collection. To get this done, let's go back to Visual Studio and try to create a new console application. So let's call this as create a new subsite. And I click on OK. Just like how we did in the previous examples, so in the project properties, let's make this to x64. And from the Solution Explorer, take into references Microsoft.SharePoint.dl. This assembly is required for every program that uses server object model. And then let's take into references the Microsoft.SharePoint and um, Microsoft.SharePoint.Administration. So our intention is to create a subsite under an existing site collection. So which site collection that is, we need to take into the references. So I'm actually planning to create a brand new site collection under this a brand new website under this site collection. So we need an SP web object this time. So you can see in the to the constructor of the SP site class we are actually passing the URL of the site collection which you wish to connect to. And I call the open web method with the site object to get the the top level sites handle of this URL. Now I can simply say site dot all webs dot at so that's your brand new subsite. So you are expected to pass in the the web URL. You can notice the title. Okay, let's say I'm planning to create a block site this time. So that's the URL and that's the title and some description and I'm planning to use US English language so I say LCID as 1033 and then the web template has to, has to be this time block has zero that's a reserved word and would you like to use unique permissions or convert if there okay I don't want to use any unique permissions uh, I just want to use the same permissions for this subsite as the parent site has got finally I can actually give a message to the user uh, block site has been created successfully and then we will give some read line statement so you can notice here the we're creating a brand new subsite in this demonstration. As you can see, I was actually calling site.allwebs.add. That's where we are creating a subsite. So obviously the add method is actually returning an SP web object. So I will assign that return value to the web object itself. So you can actually define SP web here itself instead in the previous line because we're actually trying to get the handle of the site collection but not the handle of the website the root level website here so that's how uh, the add function is now having a URL a title description the LCID code and what template would you like to use would you like to use unique permissions I said false so let's actually go ahead and try to run this code. And this is supposed to create a brand new subsite for us. 
now you can see the message the blog site has been created successfully let's close our application let's go back to the site collection that we were using and we are in the top level site let me actually refresh this page and I, I can see my new site that just got created a minute ago and when I click on this block site you're actually inside that block site so that's how in this demonstration I've shown you how to create a new website under an existing site collection typically if you go back to the top level site one more time you have actually passed in the same values to the site.allwebs.add method that we normally fill in when you try to create a new site from the web frontend. Imagine I'm actually inside this uh, browser right now when I click on new subsite. So obviously you pass in the title, you pass in the description, you pass in the URL of the subsite and then you want to create this site based on which site template would you like to use the same permissions as the parent site and so many other options so you're filling in the same values what we normally give here inside our C sharp code so when we have supplied title uh, the URL title description the block template and so on so that is how in this demonstration I've shown you how to create a brand new website under an existing site collection in this demonstration we'll see how we can create a site collection under an existing web application with the help of a feature in the previous demonstrations we did see how to create a site collection using a console based application in this demonstration we'll create a proper SharePoint project a solution and we will develop a feature in that SharePoint project upon activating that feature a site collection has to be created so we, we can see we're currently inside the SharePoint homepage for the central administration when I click on the manage web applications normally we see the list of all web applications that are running on that server this is our web application which is running on the port number 20,000 when I click on application management and when I click on view all site collections we can see the various site collections that we have under web application 20,000 now my objective of this demonstration is to create a new site collection upon activating a feature so there are four types of uh, uh, features we have where the features runs at different scope level in fact if we can go back to the site collection when I take you to the site settings under site actions we see something like manage site features when I click on manage site features it actually shows you the list of all features that runs at a site level so these are the various features that have a scope of web and individual I mean these features are available to a specific site again if I come to the site settings and the site collection administration and the site collection features we see so many features and these features are available at a site collection level so like this there are features at site level and there are features at site collection level both these type of features we can see being in our site collection but when I take you to the central administration here you can see when I click on the manage web applications and when I select my specific web application we do have something like manage features these are the features that are running at web application level so that means these features are available to the subsequent site collections under this web application similarly when I click on this system settings we do have something like manage form features when I click on manage form features we can see the list of features that have a scope of form so these features are available to the underlying 
web applications as well. So this is how we have features at four different levels. We can have features at site level. We can have features at site collection level. We can have features at web application level. And we can have features at uh, form level as well. Now, I'm actually going to create a feature at a, at a web application level in my demonstration. I'm going to create a new feature with the scope of web application. And when that feature is activated, you can see every feature has two options like activate or deactivate. A feature is a piece of functionality in SharePoint, which you get it when you activate it and you lose it when you deactivate it. So we can implement what needs to be done when your own feature is activated or and we can also implement what needs to be done when you deactivate your feature. So that's how in this demonstration, I'm going to write an application which will actually create a new site collection under a specific web application. And the feature that I'm going to create will be of the scope web application. So to get this done, let's go back to Visual Studio and try to create a new project. I'm trying to create a new project. In all my previous demonstrations, I was actually creating console-based applications so that we can focus on the actual namespaces, classes, and its methods. But the proper way of using all that code, what we have seen in console-based applications, we can do that by implementing the same code in the projects that are suited for the SharePoint application development. Under C Sharp, when I click on Office slash SharePoint, we have something like SharePoint Solutions. When I select SharePoint Solutions, these are the various project templates that we can use to develop applications for SharePoint. Yes, we can see for 2013 project templates and we can also see for 2010 because I'm actually using Visual Studio 2012 which supports the project templates for both versions. But please remember, we can never have two different versions of SharePoint running on the same computer. Either you can have it for 2013 or you can have it for 2010. So in my case, I'm going for a SharePoint 2013 empty project. And I'm going to call my application as create a new site collection. I call this as using a feature. And we click on OK. This is our first project template uh, where, where we were using SharePoint 2013 empty project. When I select an empty project, you can add any type of items to that project template, to that solution. First thing, it will ask you, what site do you want to use for debugging? Okay, I'm actually planning to work with my 20,000 site collection. So I type the URL. What is the trust level for this SharePoint solution? Would you like to deploy this as a sandbox solution or would you like to deploy this as a form solution? The differences between form solutions and sandbox solutions will pick up at a later stage. But the basic difference is if you deploy it as a form solution, that solution is available to all the web applications on that server. If you deploy it to a sandbox solution, it is available to a specific site. Sandbox solutions was, were released in SharePoint 2010. Before that, especially in March 2003 and March 2007, we were only dealing with form solutions. So in this demonstration, I'm going for a form solution. Please be noted, this application I am developing as a developer on my developer system. And I have SharePoint installed on this computer. There is no remote development for SharePoint from Visual Studio. That means you, I cannot give any URL of my remote SharePoint server here. So you cannot do that. For example, to prove that point, if I just give some name, let's say your server. 
and then if I click on validate, I'm getting a message, cannot connect, it, connect to the target site. This error can occur if the specified site is not hosted on the local system. SharePoint solutions work only with locally installed versions of SharePoint. Remote development is only supported for the apps development for SharePoint 2013, which is your Office 365. So that is the reason we need to ensure we're actually speaking to the local site collection here, which is 20,000 in my case. So every developer is expected to have SharePoint installed on his own system for testing and deployment purpose. Overall, click on finish. Now we're creating a brand new empty SharePoint project. Let's go to the Solution Explorer and you can see various elements here. There is an SNK file, strong name key file, because whatever code that I'll be writing, that will be deployed to the Global Assembly cache by Visual Studio. And the references, we already have Microsoft.SharePoint is being taken into references by Visual Studio when we have created this project. So we don't have to take this file uh, separately by ourselves as we did in the many console-based applications. Now, there's a, con there's a folder here called as features. This is where I'm more interested in. So as I have shown you, there are many features at web application level there are many features at form level and we have also seen uh, many features at site collection level and at site level as well in this demonstration i'm going to create a feature with the scope of web application let's right click on features and click on add feature so we're creating a brand new feature and you can actually give a name to this feature. So I'm going to call this as new site collection. That's my feature name, feature title. And I can give a description. I can say when this feature is activated, it actually creates a brand new site collection. That's the description. This description normally you will see in this area. This is the feature title and this is the feature description. Scope is important here. As I said, web has the lowest scope. So where the feature will, deal, will be at a website level. The next level is site where the feature is available at a site collection. Then we have a feature at web application level, or we have a feature at the form level. In this demonstration, I'm going to create a feature at a web application level, in fact. So once the scope is being set as web application, once the description has been supplied by you, and once the title has also been supplied, we can simply save this window, copy this title name, and maybe I can rename this feature one folder to a better name like this. So once a feature has been created, you have to write some code for that feature. You can right click on the feature and you can click on add event receiver. When I click on add event receiver, first of all, you can notice you're inside a CS file and where Microsoft.SharePoint has already been taken into references. It has created for us a class and that's been inherited from SP feature receiver class, which is coming from Microsoft.SharePoint namespace. So you can notice there are four different methods, feature activated, feature deactivating, feature installed, and feature uninstalling, and feature upgrading. So like this, we have five different methods which I can actually overwrite. So these methods belongs to the SP feature receiver parent class, which we are trying to override. In this demonstration, I'm more interested in implementing the code for the feature activated. So I can select this code and I can actually uncomment and inside the 
feature activated, we're actually going to write code that will actually create a site collection. So first of all, I'm going to create an object for the SP web application. So let me actually go ahead and try to take up the Microsoft.SharePoint.Administration in this scenario. And then in the feature activated, I'm going to create an SP web application object. So you can see the feature activated method has got a very special argument called as properties of the SP feature receiver properties class. So with the help of this properties dot feature dot parent as SP web application, we can actually typecast. So wherever you activate this feature and we're trying to get the parent of that feature and we are typecasting that to the SP web application. Now, literally, you get the handle for the SP web application, which is our SPS 2013 training, 2013 training that is running on the port number 20,000. Now, I need to get the various site collections that we have under this web app. So, I can say web app dot sites that will actually give me the various sites, collections that we have under this web application. Now, currently, how many web applications do we have under, how many site collections do we have under this web application? When I click on view all site collections, there is a root site collection and there is something like site slash training. These two site collections are inside this site call at this stage. So I'm actually going to create a new site collection but before that I'm going to verify let's say I'm more interested in creating a site collection called as developer training. I'm trying to verify if site call site slash developer training equals to null that means if there is no site collection with the name developer training then you can actually go ahead and try to create a developer site collection so i can say site collection dot add we're adding a new site collection so i'm going to say site slash developer training and who is the owner of this brand new site collection. I'm going to say cop slash administrator. Cop is my domain name and then the email address of the owner. So I'm going to say administrator at cop.contoso.com. So this is a dummy email ID at this stage. So once the site has been created, so we'll be we can go back to the SharePoint Central Administration and we can verify that we have our site collection pretty much ready. Now what exactly is this site? Even if you can see in the SharePoint Central Administration, we do have slash site slash training. So frankly speaking, site is a managed path with the default managed path. So we're actually trying to create a new site collection uh, developer training under the managed path sites. So this is how we have implemented the code for the feature activated. Depending upon our requirement, we can actually implement the code for the other methods as well. So let's, this is our domain name and that's the username who is going to be the owner of this upcoming site collection. Once we are ready, we can simply build our solution and we can deploy the solution. So you can actually go back to the view and output window to see how the deployment is actually going on behind the scenes. A lot of things obviously happens behind the scenes when you are deploying a solution from Visual Studio. We have actually deployed this solution as a form solution. 
and the code what we have written actually goes to your global assembly cache and because we have created a feature and the feature is actually deploying our solution so we can inspect to where our feature gets deployed where the assembly goes and sits all these things we can verify obviously the sharepoint root folder or what we call it as sharepoint hive is the most important folder for developers if I can take you to the SharePoint root folder, uh, this is the main path in fact. Program files, common files, Microsoft Shared, under web server extensions, we have 15 slash 15 is the main folder for us. Under 15, if I can take you to template and if I can take you to features, can you see there's a new feature create a new site collection using a feature and that's the folder that actually got deployed when I have actually deployed it from my Visual Studio so as developers we need to know where things are getting deployed so 15 template features is the most essential folder where all of our features gets deployed so you can notice here the deployment has been succeeded and the features have been activated successfully. So let's go back to SharePoint Central Administration and try to see the list of site collections that we have under the uh, web application 20,000. So so you can see now once I have refreshed my SharePoint Central Administration site collection list we now can see there is a site slash developer training that's the URL to access that site collection that's the title uh, and then the owner is the administrator and then we can pass you can see the email ID and of course it's using the same content database as the other site collections so if I can copy this URL and if I can open that, we now are accessing a brand new site collection that we have just created when the feature is activated. So where can I see that feature? Yes, when I click on manage web applications and when I select my specific web application and when I click on manage features, can you see there's a new feature called as new site collection when this feature is activated it creates a new site collection and it has already been in active state so this is the feature that we have actually created and that can be seen here at a scope of web application in the SharePoint central administration also if we can if I can take you to my Windows folder and if I can take you to Microsoft.net assembly and under GAC MSIL I can see my assembly here so this is how the SNK file what we have here and then you can actually see the main assembly that actually got deployed to the global assembly cache so as developers we need to know where our assembly is getting deployed and where the features are actually getting deployed all these things so all these things happens behind the scenes when you actually deploy a solution from Visual Studio also if you can right click on your file and go to open containing folder and um, if you can see in the create new site in our project bin debug there is a WSP file that's your packaged solution so the WSP file is what needs to be deployed actually to the SharePoint server if I can copy the WSP file and if I can paste it here and let's rename the WSP file maybe as a cabinet file or a zip file you can change the extension just to see what is there inside I'm renaming that to a cabinet file 
and then when I double click on that file you can see your main assembly and you can see the feature.xml so that's how a WSB file contains your your assemblies and then the feature related files so that is how in this demonstration I've shown you how to create a brand new site collection when the feature is activated so overall to summarize what we did we have created an empty SharePoint project and within that we have created a feature and when the feature actually got activated this it has created a brand new site collection for us.